This is Go. some good old fashioned burg, I reckon. You reckon? I have a feeling I might be some burgundy right here. It's expensive little lineup we're putting together at this point. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. <laughs> Welcome back to another week of Wine for the People Tastings. Guys, if you're new to the show, we are a blind tasting show. We'll taste uh, these six wines. We have no idea what they are. We've acquired these wines from Sometimes Always, who have kindly made a random selection for us. And of course, if you're looking to for ways, and if you are part of the show and are part of the community, and you love what we do here, we actually do acquire these wines. So if you're looking for a way to support us, like and subscribe, honestly, it's a youtuber -y thing, but it genuinely does help. It really, really, really does help. We know that about 50% of people that watch this show aren't subscribed and if you want to see us continue on doing this we do need that so like and subscribe and you'll get to see more idiots like us tasting wine putting ourselves through an inordinate amount of pain to be able to deliver to you guys the tastiest wines for the least amount of money possible First one, red, as is the theme of the week. Uh, a little bit of clarity to it, and by clarity I mean transparency, so I can still see my hand and my ring on the other side of the glass there. Nice little medium ruby we're looking at here. Not gonna curry a lot of favor with the guys. Uh, it's barnyardy, bit funky. Um, there's definitely old Britannomyces is, is making a, a lovely little um, appearance here. I will say it's a little bit overpowering though. Like there's, there's not a lot of definition of any other fruit that could possibly be in this, um, which is a little bit upsetting. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, it's got sort of like, like a straw or hay thing sort of going on, like where it's quite fresh. I think it's natty. Definitely natty. It doesn't taste like it's got sulfur in there. Tannin like velvet. Like absolutely silky smooth tannins. And a good deal of acidity here as well. Love those kind of racy red fruits and there's a nice leathery thing. Uh, like I said, it, the, the, the appearance of this Brett, Britannomyces infection, is actually uh, quite overpowering to the palate. And it clips it, actually makes the palate a little bit metallic as well, so not overly ideal. Leaning more towards the three side of things, so we've got a bit of room to move later on. Uh, and I'll go 30 bucks for that one. I don't think it's going to be outrageously expensive by any means. Uh, but a cool wine though. Nice, like, red cherry racy fruit thing. Delicious. Wine number two. We're going to a, a slightly darker, deeper, intense color. A little bit rick, uh, brick, rick. A little bit rick. A little bit brick, uh, tawny hue. Like oaky and uh, sort of aged. Like the, that's what the back of a meat processing plant smells like with exceptionally high uh, food health safety standards. This smells like a winery. Like straight out, uh, there's wood everywhere. There's grapes flying around. You got people covered in red wine splatters because they've messed up their pump overs or something. This is exactly what that smells like. There's some tannin here. Damn, just sucked all the air out of my mouth. Holy shit. That is a high level of tannin. I love this wine, it's fantastic. I think it's probably very useful, very early release, like Lange Nebbiolo, Barolo. It's uh, yeah, Italian right up my alley. The, the tannin is actually very full uh, and very, very present, but not in a rough way, not like a very um, uh, svelte like way. I think it might be like a Sangio or something, like a Sangiovese, like some little Italian number. I'm gonna go for the rarely seen five bottles on this show, five bottles, and then you've got one uh, spot in your six pack left to get something really interesting. But yeah, cool little wine. Uh, no issues with it. Wine number three. We're really sitting in this like uh, sort of medium body to light hue here. Uh, purple, purple uh, highlights. Little bit reductive, not too much at all. Like a little bit of a fart in there, but also there is some sort of like berry, sort of nice fruity smell coming through as well. So if it was just the reduction in there, I probably wouldn't be about it. But having that little bit of sweetness and freshness in there definitely helps that wine a lot on the nose. Gorgeous, bright and vibrant. Red cherries, that nice smoky flinty thing. Gorgeous little peanut. Gorgeous, great, delicious wine. Great structure, nice and savory, but that fruit is beautiful. Definitely swallowed that one. Love this wine. Ooh, yes. Finish is great, rounded. It just drops off in a really pleasing way, almost like it fans out across the palate. I think it's gamay. Uh, love the wine, 60 bucks, 12 bottles. Not a lot of tannin, not a lot of structure. Brilliant acidity. Certainly not difficult to drink by any means, which is, you know, a good stand to hold yourself to if you're drinking wines. You don't want it to be a challenge. It's usually a relaxing process for me at least. Yeah, again, medium body, medium white. Uh, it happens every week. Grenache. One of these days, I swear to God. Is it as good as last week's Pinot? Nah, we'll, we'll, we, we hard pressed to find a Pinot as good as that wine again on this show. But this gets pretty close. 
as we hop into wine number four. Like, compare the pair, like, same age, same income, except one of them's doing that really smug, like, superannuation things that elevates up on the back of the moving truck. Let's see which one is going to be better off in retirement. Medium red, medium ruby, same deal. A little bit more savoury here, a little bit more whole bunch or, like, forest floory kind of things here. Classic. Not a lot of oak handling here, though, so I'm not too sure whether... I, I, I'm not even not too sure. I'm actually kind of confident that we're not going to be in, in new school burgundy. Potentially really well-made Victorian, though. That's getting in the right direction. That's more my speed. So I think the uh, the sort of floral nose does come through on the palate quite a bit. So you get this really nice sort of uh, lifted. It, it does. It, it's hard to say when you're tasting things that taste like flowers because obviously flowers don't taste very good. So autumnal, the wankiest word I've ever said on the show, but it's autumnal. It's really leafy, foresty, earthy. In the industry, we call panosity, which is a really shitty term when trying to describe vino. Oh, it's got panosity. It means it just tastes like its varietal character says it is. Six bottles and I'm gonna say like 35 bucks a bottle. I'm hazarding a guess it's probably gonna come in a lot further north than that, um, but I have my reasons. Number five, bit of a deeper color here. Oh, that's, 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 a, that's a gym sock right there. Again, reductive. A lot of reduction we're seeing today, which is a bit of a shame. Gonna be a big wine. Big, big, dense wine. Hard to do this style well. It used to be back in the day, everyone just did this style because more meant better. More color, more alcohol, more everything just meant better. Now, we've all wisened up. Like, it's all about actually looking for inherent beauty. We're looking for actual like retaining of, of or, or holding back and restraint of certain things. It smells like dried fish, which is something that I come across quite a bit in wines that no one ever agrees with me about. White bait sort of fish. That's what it smells like in terms of the flavor. Oh yeah, kind of like a bit of like lavender or something going on in terms of the palette. Like it's quite floral, but then also very muted on the back end. Like it doesn't really open up into like any big fruit flavors or anything. Honestly, the palette is fantastic. It's just like really crunchy blue racy fruits that kind of are the core of the, the wine itself. It feels like a good Sangio. It's like really awesome blue fruitedness, great tannin round structure. The taste of blood. And I don't really see that here. This is really quite pristine. These are really quite pretty. More, and again, more of that plum primary fruited. I've spent too much long, too, this is indicator of how good this wine is. I've spent so long talking about it. Let's move on. Finishing us up, another red wine for the week. And it's looking, oh no, lucky. Oh no, oh, oh no. It's too reductive, lucky. Another medium, medium ruby. Medium ruby lineup. It's all medium ruby, fucking hell. Even though the ones are completely different, you have to call them the same thing. Pretty nondescript arom aromatically, unfortunately. Yeah, she's a little bit farty, sorry. Um, it's it's hard to actually pick up any varietal character in it. Now, this could actually improve over the course of the next couple of tastings with the guys, so we'll see how we go. But at the moment, I'm struggling. I'm struggle town on this one. My favorite of the lineup, this one here, um, all of those things before talking about like things falling flat and then just not having that little burst of fruit at the end. This has it. So it's got quite a uh, flat mid palette, which is, uh, I assume, the right term. Um, oh, so juicy. Oh, that's so juicy. Nice kind of sinewy tannins on the side. They're not too overbearing. Oh, I love this. Great acidity. I really love this. 45 bucks for me. No idea what it is. Narrow? I'm gonna go narrow. Fuck it. So I, I've ha I hazard a guess this probably cost me a little bit to buy, but how much would I spend on this? Uh, I'd spend 25 bucks a bottle on it and I'd buy one bottle. Yeah, lovely. One of the lineup for me, I'll have 12 and I'll say it is a Cabernet blended with Pinot and it's gonna cost, I reckon each of those wines separately would be $25. So you're putting both of them together, it's $50. Simple logic. $50 wine, I'll have 12 of them. Definitely wine of the lineup for me. And I'm glad that I managed to say different things about all of them because honestly, my biggest fear is having nothing to say about six red wines that are all the same. So we got there. Uh, I'll be very interested to see if the boys can pick some more differences apart because they obviously are much better at the palate game than me. But yeah, cool little lineup. All right, welcome back. Guys, another six wines, uh, six reds for a change. Uh, rather than mixing it up and stop lights and all this stuff. Yeah. What's, um, how did you, it's the first time I think for a while that I've sort of, I don't know, I've been challenged a little bit. First four, like I, you know, looking at them in the glasses, they look identical. These two, you've got a little bit more depth to them, but trying to pick apart the differences in them, I don't know, having contrast when you've got like it's reds good. into whites, reds into whites. It's yeah. a lot easier to find the differences. Yeah, look, there's a couple on, on my list, uh, but I reckon starting <laughs> off at number one, uh, unfortunately this wasn't one that was on my list. It wasn't huge for me, no. 
It was, I think this was a little bit too savory. I think it was almost, is this, did you taste mouse here? I didn't taste any mouse. No, no mouse in any of these. I couldn't pick it up yet. It was a little um, bit, I, that was the only one that I was getting a little bit of that barnyard funk from. Uh, and yeah, I, was pretty, the, I was interested to see if you picked up on, on any of that. Yeah, I had three for 30, some little natty juice thing that was... I had 10 for one, the Brett killed it for 10 me. bucks. 10 bucks, I would bro. pay. I would pay 10 bucks for a bottle of that. Because the, no, the, the Brett, I couldn't, I, I don't know where it's from, I don't know what it's made from, I don't know what the winemaker was trying to do, I'm pretty confident they didn't intend for this to happen, no. and if they did, I don't think they'd give a shit either. And for those watching at home, uh, COVID has cured my ability to be able to even pick up mousiness, so I'm mm. living a great life while everyone else sucks. Yeah, yeah so you thought that uh, was worth 10 bucks and you didn't think it was mousy, imagine if you could taste the mouse. Yeah, anyway. I'm gonna say it's like 60 bucks, so how much is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, what it's like got? 60 bucks. What do we got here? What do we got? Uh, oh, it's more gone. It's this more is gone. proper Beaujolais. Yeah. Proper uh, Beaujolais. Shame. Bretty Beauge. Which we had uh, uh, the Domaine uh, Saint Sir. Uh, we had their Beaujolais Nouveau a few weeks ago and we fucking loved it. Yeah, they're more gone, which is what you pay a little bit more money for. Unfortunately, is yeah, just a bit. How you going? Going a bit fast around the corner, as <laughs> uh, our good friend Sam Scott would say. Yeah. Um, it's going a bit too fucking quick around the corner. The, I'm yeah, not even sure it made control. the fucking corner, man. Just I get flipped. Yeah, <laughs> it's lost control. It's tumbling down the ravine and it's exploded in a fiery, fiery crash. A uh, uh, bit of a shame uh, because we like this producer. Like, love Beaujolais, love Morgan, but this is yeah. not something worth level. 63 bucks or whatever. Ah. Just get your party juice to the and be I done with it. But it did, the tasting redeemed itself on this next wine. I thought that might be the case. Yeah, what a lovely, fun little thing, hey? Yeah, the, the tasting like just picked up the whole way through for me. Like it just got better and mm. better and better. There was one misstep for me, but we'll come to that later on. This yep. one was cool. I thought it was some little sort of like sour, sangio-y sort of thing. I don't know. What do you reckon, Noah? This is in that Barolo spectrum. Yeah, this is that Nebbiolo yeah. thing. So like Sangio is, it, it could be, it could definitely be Sangiovese. It needs at least five years to chew them. Fuck out! It's yeah. an immature wine. Oh, it's, a, it's an annoying kid at a fucking school ground. It's a really good wine. I wanted six bottles. I'd happily pay ninety bucks for it. Uh, but yeah, it's just we're just drinking it far too young. It's very like abrasive. Mm. Mm. It is powerful. Yeah. There's a density there. Very rare. Five bottles for thirty-five dollars. Niche. Yeah. Very niche. niche. Very niche. Yeah. So yeah. I like it. Where'd you, you go? Uh, I went uh, eighty bucks. Very similar. Twelve. Yeah. 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 So I thought this was going to cost a pretty penny. Let me push yeah. into it. How much was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's go. good. That's a good nice. spot for it. Honestly. Stuff, well, I know. And it all doesn't look like it. Green oh, I think he might be right. Anyway, he's done well. He's he might be right. Sangio. Rosso de Valentina. So it's uh, it's Chivinesca. A good friend Alpine sometimes. Nebbiolo. Again. Is it Alpine Neb? It's Alpine Neb. God, yeah. we can't pick that. No. Nah. We're terrible at it. We pick Nebbiolo, I, but we can't pick I, ne I'm Alpine. just going to start picking Alpine Neb always. The folks are sometimes always. Are they just, love it. They, they're they not sometimes when it comes to. They're always Alpine Neb. They're always Alpine Neb. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm alright with it as well. Um, you know, and this is, I was expecting eventually, like, you just can't. It's heroic viticulture out there. You can't expect Voltolina prices to remain as low as they are. I reckon they will probably end up exceeding, have the cap capability to exceed the prices of Barolo very soon. If they keep making wines of this quality, they can definitely do that. Speaking of hectic, yeah, next wine as well. Love this. Yeah, Twelve it, on it as well. Little bit, little bit reductive early on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blow away, but yeah. Underneath that, whoo boy, this good. is some good old fashioned Berg. I reckon. You reckon? I have a feeling I might be some Burgundy right here. It's an expensive little lineup we're putting together at this point. Yeah, right? I think you're exactly right. I was 35 for six. I was 80 and 12. Because we're spending some money, goddamn. Yeah, it. man. But I mean, it looks like it's a pretty, you know, this this whole lineup's worth a pretty penny yeah, so far. Out. What are we on? All right, 60, all right, that's yeah. good. There that's we good. Go. 60. I was, I was on on the money. Tell 16 12. Is it, is it Grenache or is Burgundy? Lucky. No, it's Pinot. It's, it's Pinot. Tazzy. It's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, you're it's closer. It's our, it's our good uh, friend, uh, the Edge. Dr. Edge. Pete yeah. Dredge. Uh, once again, banging out of the park with wines that we absolutely love. We've never hated a wine. We've had a bunch of his wines. That Even shot. wines that were that, that Chardonnay Musk still fucks with my head that he does. That really, that really is crazy. Every single wine, though, every single wine is a banger. Except for if you're Henry Doyle. I didn't. Uh, uh, as I you said, got six. We're escalating. We got six on that one. It's not. We're getting there. Just wait. We got he wanted eight, six, six of that. I, yeah. Cracking wine. Great wine. Once again, honestly, like it's a sixty dollar wine. But I think enough time has passed in the show where we keep like singing the praises of this guy's wine. It's worth the fucking money. All right. So things took a bit of a turn for me here. I wasn't wasn't uh, so big on this. I was on the up and up. I was big on this. Yeah. yeah. I thought this was really tightly wound, really savoury. But I think in time, I think give it a couple of years in bottle, it'll look 
as good as the previous one and it, it was in the, these three wines were like really fantastic maybe drunk a little bit early i think it's a great one yeah i think this is delicious i think it's a little bit too tight at the moment um i was a big fan of it i went a 12 for 60. i had uh eight for 40 again getting with the niche bottle numbers i have 35 and six how much is it setting us back 50, 50 bucks. yeah right Pinot territory. i have a feeling we're on a bit of a ball of red red i think we've got a bit of a theme going Paulie, on another tazzy pino yeah, really good. Anna Pauly, absolute, uh, you know, amazing, talented winemaker. She's she's know, smashing yeah. it out of the park. And we've had both her and her uh, husband's uh, Justin Bub. His wines on here from Barlow. That is true. Uh, and uh, yeah, they just and and you, to be honest, it's like Pauly wines have sort of I think in the last couple of years dropped off the the radar a little bit. Now they're coming back up. And we're hearing a little bit more about them. So it's really quite exciting. I think what's see them one of those thrive. things where it's like it's a very heritage producer. They've been making wine in Tassie. It's a it's a generational winery. Like they've passed it down through generations through the natural wine kind of scene they kind of got like forgotten about because it wasn't like they didn't do the hands-off kind of thing they're very tailored and all that kind of thing but now we're looking at them again it's like they're still fantastically quality wine yeah yeah and i think yeah. the elevation of what's coming out of the piccadilly valley in terms of pinot noir is really driving the tasmanian pinot market to sort of accelerate their own produce and well that's yeah. based around the south australian representation of the two wines in the market Naturally. so i understand where you're coming from exactly i'm not sure whether you guys rehearsed that outside and i actually initially thought you were just taking the piss and it was some sarcastic thing then I realised it was a highly intelligent statement. A serious wine critic. Mentioning, mentioning the, the status of the Pinot Noir market and the basis of the rise of Piccadilly Valley producers. Henry, I am so proud. But I've been saying it for months. I've been I'm, saying it for months. <laughs> I am so proud. That was fantastically what, done. What you'll find is he was taking the piss and then I lent into it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next wine. And I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I did, but I truly did. Yeah, it was one of those wines where I, the way I would really enjoy it is just do this and off we go. Yeah. 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 I had three for 30. I had six for 48. And I thought it was Monte Puccino. I said Puccino. Sangio, so we're in the same ballpark. Ball 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 ball. What do we got? Ooh. 40. What is that? It's from some sort of hill, but I looks love the label, though. That is. Oh, gorgeous. that label is sick. That is. I think gorgeous. that's Enderosso. Yeah, it looks like feels Mosaic, like Mosaic. Wines of France. France. Uh, Grenache, Grenache Syrah. Syrah. Yeah, Grenache so it's Syrah. Just like large format Grenache Syrah from uh, the Roussillon. Uh, yeah. Okay, so as not a uh, expert on Japanese culture, I've got like a little bit of like Japanese painting rising sun going over there on that. 100%. Yeah. Uh, the thing about the last one, and I also noted it in the tasting as well, uh, it was reductive as all heck. You're what? Right? It, it was reductive as all heck. I was just Did you first. Go first? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just the first one on it. And that that doesn't. That's not reductive at all. No, no it's, this it's, is blown it's off beautifully. Completely blown off. High acid, like narrow vibe kind of thing. I thought mm. it was awesome. Yeah, Nero's a good shout. I had, I thought it had Nero's actually a really good shout because I was thinking like it's got a bit of a pinoy finish, like a little sort of sour raspberry mm. thing on the back end, but then it's got a little bit more interest at the front. So I was like, oh, is it a pinot blended with something? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had twelve and um, fifty bucks. I had six and mm. forty-five. I had well, I had twenty-five dollars for one, but. That's not to count. It, it honestly just really needed some decanting and some time before I tasted it. So don't yep. take my score into a, an account. Yeah. What's what have we got? Ooh, that's good. That's good affordable. narrow territory as well. Good value. What have we got? Ooh, what is that? Oh, again, it's again. Gamay. Fuck. Wow. Fuck. Damn, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. High acid makes sense. Uh, and it's a um, Savoir Valley Gamay. Savoir. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Brilliant. That's awesome. Absolutely brilliant. That's... We've, these haven't typically been pretty successful on the show either, um, to be honest. Like the last couple that we've seen, like Savoy Games, but these, this is fantastic. This is looking really, really good. Very drinkable yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's party town. What's your pick? Well, I mean, if we were to go by the level of wines remaining here, I mean, I did just pour a little bit more there. Yeah, did just top. And I up. do actually want to. I back that. That's awesome. But that, that for me was the the Doctor Edge. It's got to be. No, I love thoughts? that. I'd have to say this is Doctor Edge as well. I said twelve for that one. I caught a burger and it's Tazzy. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't mind it. I had six of them, so I'm happy to go with you guys there. They, none of these were like my absolute showstoppers, so I'll definitely defer to you on these. Well, the fact that you know we. Could easily navigate to Burgundy as well. But um, I have to say though, Cabernet Pinot, when you really think about Gamay, Pinot with, with structure and Pinot with high acid and, and tannin, that's um, maybe that's just a little bit of a mental note. So I've accidentally no. said two clever things this episode. I, I, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to good. replace you very soon. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're getting a promotion. We're we're getting getting cut. Cut. Oh, no. yeah. This week we've got Dr. Edge as uh, the wine of the week, guys. Again. Thank you. Again. <laughs> uh, thanks for chiming in, guys. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. Please. But until next week, we'll be here. See you next time, guys. I do what I want, 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 what I